This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! Disposing of the corpse. The ultimate way not to create a beginning was to not let the corpse be found. It was even more important than killing him. Hey, you can just throw it in the bottom of the swamp. Thinking on it vaguely, the first thing that came to mind was the swamp. Boom! Onigafuchi, the dreadful bottomless swamp revered even now, that appeared in the legends of Onigafuchi village. Yes, the swamp was called Onigafuchi for here, uh, was here first, and then the village took its name to become Onigafuchi village. In other words, this swamp was the origin of Onigafuchi village. Thank you for using the word Onigafuchi so many times in that sentence. No one, no matter who it was, would float back to the surface of this bottomless swamp. Everyone would be swallowed down into the land of the demons below the earth. That was how the stories went. If I was trying to copy Oyashirosama's curse, then I felt that theory demanded I discard the remains and the weapon into the swamp. But they may have said it's bottomless, but I didn't actually know. And people say large creatures like humans produce a lot of gas when they rot, granting a lot of buoyancy. It was why using fairly heavy objects to hold people down didn't work. Really? Even, like, a lot of heavy rocks? Really? Come to think of it, the curse the year before or last, Rika-chan's mother drowned herself in this swamp. Allegedly. And the criminal behind the dismemberment that went missing in the year of the first curse, too. It was rumored he'd tried to discard the body in the swamp and accidentally drowned in it. I never heard of the corpse coming back up or them finding it. Then... Shouldn't I choose to discard the corpse there, too? I could discard the weapon there. And then, for example, if her uncle came out on a motorcycle and attacked, it would be convenient to get rid of the bike, too. I knew that Satoko's uncle generally used a motorcycle for transportation. But, as for the corpse... After a lot of worrying, I decided not to discard the corpse in the swamp. The drowning suicide and accident were both rumors. Nobody knew if they'd actually happened. There was no lack of false rumors about the drowning suicide anyway, and it was possible the murderer hadn't drowned there and was still on the run. That meant no one had ever confirmed a corpse being dropped in there and then not coming back up. Then what would I do with the body? Okay, I guess if you're erring on the side of safety, that makes sense. I thought it might be interesting to go with the first incident, cut him to pieces, then hide him, but the preparation and work for dismembering a human body would be difficult given the time I've had. Also, you're definitely going to get some of that blood on you, and that's a lot of evidence. And good luck cleaning up the blood on the crime scene. With that out of the question, I arrived at the conclusion. To go with the more orthodox method of burying the body. Okay, well, good luck with that. Uh, it's pretty much impossible to uh, dig a hole, bury something there, and not have where you buried it look suspicious. But good luck. Then where would I bury it? That was a question related to where I would kill him. Of course, I wanted to keep my time and proximity to the body to a minimum. With that in mind, I would dig a hole in the, to dump the body in beforehand, and to make sure that the location of the act and the hole were close together. The choice of where to plan the crime. That I needed to be absolutely careful and th thorough with. It had to be somewhere nobody could would witness it. And a place of hiding places for a sneak attack. I could dig a hole for the body right there. How could you- how are you gonna get him to go there by himself without telling anybody he's going there in advance? This is gonna be the hardest part. Technically, if you put the corpse into a trash bag and then dismember it, you could do it without blood getting on you. Um... Even I'm pretty sure when you cut body parts off, the blood can kind of splurt out. So that could- that- definitely the blood splatter could get on you. I've never done this before, but I- I would assume... I go over the possibilities in my head of the various destinations her uncle would head to from Sotoko's house. Since I'm assuming he's going to kill the guy, then immediately would dismember him. Like, I'm, I'm guessing if you wait a while and the blood, like, obviously the heart stops, but, like, the blood is still pumping through your body for a bit after you die. I guess if you wait until after all that settled down, there would be less splatter. Hmm... I imagined a map of the area in my head, and then I found a place that fulfilled those conditions so easily it was almost unbelievable. A bit of a back road that went through the woods. I didn't think her uncle would go deeper into the mountains of Yagyo Yagauchi on a whim. If he was going somewhere, he'd pass through these woods first. And nobody used this back way unless they had something to do at Satoko's house or one or two other places. This path was fantastically ideal, as few people used it. I would wait for him in these woods. Would an ambush actually be possible? I went into the trees and tried really hiding myself in a few places. It was extremely quiet. 
My senses could be sharpened here to their maximum amount. I didn't know when he'd come, but I'd wait right here for Satoko's uncle. <laughs> yes, most of the splatter would definitely get in the trash bag, and then it would be fine, but it would still definitely be easily get on you, too. Also, like, whatever you use as the weapon, you're not getting the blood off of that. Luminol test can reveal that, and your fingerprints will be on it, even if you... Well, I guess you could wipe them away later, but, like, then... Where are you gonna hide the murder weapon? You gonna bury that, too? I actually had some trouble coming to that decision. The question arose of whether I, I should somehow call the man out. Was there a risk I'd be taking by luring him here? That man made Satoko do all the shopping and errands. He seldom left on his own business. He wouldn't leave. Unless I worked out a plan to force him to, would he? That was the question. He's not attending the festival, right? Tomorrow was the Watanagashi festival. Would he go out for the festival, or would he stay inside? If he stayed inside, how would I drag him out of his house? That's right. Wouldn't he make Satoko go to the festival? Satoko would go to the festival. Meanwhile, I would call the man. This is the Okinomiya police station. We have the young lady from your house. Could you come and pick her up immediately? It didn't even have to be the police. This is the clinic. The young lady from your house has been injured. Please come and pick her up. Yes, that would work too. If I claimed to be the police or the hospital, told them to come and then hunt up on him, he'd rush there trying to figure out what was going on, wouldn't he? And just the other day, he was visited by a probation officer. He wouldn't suddenly grumble about having to get his niece and not go. It would look like child neglect. The man had no skills useful around the house. Satoko, his slave, was an essential part of his daily life. Conclusion. If he went out to the festival, I would attack him on his way there or back. If he didn't, I would lure him out by phone. If luring him out by phone was my first step, I needed to make sure that Satoko would go to the festival, leaving the house. It would be convenient if I could make Mion take Satoko to the festival. She said her aunt was a district welfare officer. In other words, an ally to the probation officer. If I somehow incited Mion to take Satoko to the festival with her, well, being who she was, she'd use that fact and get her there. Satoko should just take a break and have fun at the festival with everyone. She should have a good time, reminisce on her former, former peaceful days, and then when she went home, everything would be over. Yeah. That would be the best outcome. Okay, but, um, KG, aren't, isn't it gonna look really suspicious when it's like, wow, only two people didn't go to the Watanagashi festival, and one of them died. Hmm. Or, like, one of them disappeared. Hmm. Gee, I wonder who the top suspect would be. Probably the guy who didn't show up. Because, like, if the crime is occurring in Hinamizawa, it's a small town. Everyone knows everyone, and everyone goes to Watanagashi. If you aren't at Watanagashi, you're gonna be suspect numero uno, my friend. With that decided, I needed to dig a hole somewhere in the woods to hide the body. Right. Hey, thanks for the follow, Witch of Pandemonium. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so, it wouldn't stand out, so it wouldn't be found. Someplace nobody would see me while I was completely exposed as I buried the corpse. I had wanted it to be close to the scene of the crime, but it naturally grew farther away. Deep in the bosom of the Black Forest. The voices of the Higarashi were the only sounds here, informing me that people shouldn't indiscreetly set foot in this place. <laughs> Digging a hole with so many tree roots crawling out around the ground would be far more difficult than I'd envisioned. I snuck a gardening spade out here in my bag, but that wouldn't be enough. Still, as I looked into various approaches, I managed to find a place I could dig into. No! Not at all. I, I like chat interaction. It's good. Tomorrow, I'd bring a real shovel from the storeroom at home. I'd manage with that. I wondered how big a hole it would have to be to fit a human all the way into it. I also wonder how fat the guy is. I'd probably have to dig pretty deep down. But if I was slipshod in these efforts, I'd let a beginning occur. I absolutely couldn't allow that. Use any amount of time you need to. Well, the more time you use, the more suspicious you will be. Also, when you dig the hole, be like, Hey, it's like, um, why are you covered in dirt? Why did, Why do you have blisters on your hands? Ah, uh, you know, don't worry about it. I mustn't spare any effort to utterly erase him. I glanced at my wristwatch. It was a little past six. This is probably all I was going to get done here for today. I really wanted to dig that hole in advance tonight, even if it got dark out, but Mom would be upset if I stayed out that late. It wouldn't be good to come off as suspicious to my parents. I needed to go back home and give Mion a call soon. I needed to get her to promise to t uh, Satoko to take her by tonight. After that, today would be done. 
done. Would it be, though? Was this really everything I could do to prepare right now? I decided where to kill him. I decided how to kill him. I decided, of course, how to dispose of the body. I didn't decide on a time, but I would play that by ear. I didn't have a way to decide that. Was that really all? Was this really all right? Have I overlooked anything? Yeah, the fact that you're not going to be at the festival. Would this really go how I planned? After this, worries started welling up one after the other. It was only natural I'd be anxious. This would be the first and last big job of my lifetime. The last? I don't know about that. I could not allow failure, and I had no experience, as this was my first time. I didn't have the know-how, the knack. So it was only natural I'd be anxious. The dark clouds of unease told me that doing nothing would be the easiest way. A truly pathetic suggestion this late in the game. Have you forgotten how miserable Satoko looked? From the outside, it may have looked like I was resolute, but deep in my heart, my knees were shaking loudly. I've never actually won a single fight to my satisfaction. Can I really kill someone? I may have been planning an ambush, but my enemy was large and far older than me. Oh, okay. That's right. So Keiichi apparently did get an actual glimpse of the uncle, and apparently he's big. He had a scary face, and he looked like he was well accustomed to fighting. Could I have... All the pieces before me and after the murder were perfectly planned. But was the actual murder the most important part? What unsettled me the most? I would hope so! All my preparations, all my perfectly concealed machinations. I didn't. If I didn't successfully murder him, they amounted to nothing. <laughs> my machinations lay dormant for years. Damn it! After coming this far, you're pathetic, Keiji Maibara. If you start to have these kind of second thoughts, your ulterior motive will be obvious. Let's go home. Go home and calm your mind. Take another one-hour shower. Tomorrow will be a juncture in your life, the likes of which graduation, employment, marriage, and childbirth couldn't hold a candle to. A day of murder. To kill someone. For someone else's sake. With that day behind us, we would take it back again. Those mild, spring-like days we never thought would stop. Those safe, peaceful, fun times. I pedaled my bicycle hard to get back home. I felt somehow unsteady. Like my body and soul weren't in alignment. It's because they're not. A subtle shift between where the tips of my hands and feet really were and where I felt them to be. My vision was a little distant and narrow. As if the great barrier I risked my future life on had nothing to do with me. An unreal sensation. How could I put it? Everything was so far away. Actually, come to think of it. Oh, it's the same thing. Doggone it. These are supposed to be different soundtracks, so why? Oh, okay. That's a slightly different song. Are these all the same? Okay. Interesting. Fine. Feel your unease permeate you, KG Maibara. If that will turn your timidity into meticulousness and allow you to act with a greater caution, then it's actually an important motion to feel. <laughs> Saying his planning is perfect after never dodging a single one of his traps. Yeah, I think he's a little overconfident, maybe. <laughs> yes, hey, Ruben. Yes, that was a pro ZD reference. My machinations are dormant for years. <laughs> They didn't replace every track. I still... Okay, can I just say, to this day, I literally still have no idea what the heck all these different sounds are. Okay, so, New Manga Gamer 2019. I don't know what that is. I'm assuming this is the original soundtrack from, like, the original release of the game. This one is presumably the console soundtrack. This one is the Steam soundtrack. This is a demo soundtrack. And then these two are like fan remakes. This one's a remake of the console. And then this one is a remake of the original. Jun, how is original and what you recommend? Okay. We can have this for a little bit. I'm fine with that. I don't think I've ever... I've always gone... I've always been like, new is better. But that's actually not always the case. All right. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll give this a listen for a little bit. It's actually an important emotion to feel. This feeling I had never went away that night. Oh, good. The scene changes and the music stops literally right when I change the music. I just want to make sure, like, 
if there are parts of the game where in the original version there wasn't music, but there is music in the newer versions, I like to make sure that I have newer music. First four arcs, this used only royalty-free songs because no budget. And then starting with Kai, the OST gets even better. Excellent. It was the first time I'd be calling Mion's house. I searched for her in the phone book the school gave me, then dialed a short phone number, the kind unique to remote places. It was around dinner time. She would probably be home. But just as I started to think nobody would respond, somebody finally picked up the receiver. What do you want? Oh, it's Grandma. Hi, Tanogaki She just said it was. Oh, never. Okay, technically she said it's Sonozaki, but is that... Maybe, oh, I guess it could be Shion. Well, why would she be at that house? There's a really dumb section where the new OST just replaces all of a constantly looping sound effect. Wait, really? That's far... Okay, I think... I normally prefer... Uh, I, can't, I can't remember. I can't remember if I had originally the... Like, the... Let me try saying this sentence again. When I first started this chapter, and we got the scene of, like, them finding the the, the the rotten body, dead body in the trash can, one of the new soundtracks, the one that I had on by default, was playing, like, a rather upbeat song. It was like, and I'm like, this does not fit the song at all. And the other one is a much more serious one, so, yeah. <laughs> Why that? She seemed to be in a weirdly good mood, and she drew out her syllables out. Right. It's the night before tomorrow's festival, so she's probably with her family having some drinks. <laughs> Please take her to the festival! I heard her draw a small breath on the other end. Yep. The scent... Of sake had completely disappeared from her voice. Anna, oh, now he's speaking in stereo. Oh, Oh, so we got two of us for the original. All right, I, I'll leave the original soundtrack on for a bit. I guess I would always... Ass I assumed because the original version, like you said, had, like, oh, no budget, pretty much. I assumed that it would be a lower-quality soundtrack and that they got, like, better songs for the new one, but may maybe that's not true. So, <laughs> But by asking this, Keiichi is going to look so suspicious if he's not at the festival too, though. あいつもいろいろと参ってるの分かるだろう。だからさ、明日のお友達の祭りにあいつを連れて行ってやってほしいんだ。それは構わんどうして？どうしてって。せめて祭りの夜くらい息抜きさせてやりたいじゃないか。うん、オッケー。たとえ一夜でもあの意地悪なおじの元から離れられるなら短い時間でもきっとさとこは喜ぶ。ああ、オッケー、I was having a little difficulty understanding what Mion was asking me. This, I'm scared of her uncle. Mion was persistent about odd things. No, maybe it'd be better to say that she was sharp. <laughs> Sorry, I, I had something I was planning on doing. Oh, he's just gonna upright and say, like, hey, I can't make it to the festival. That's true. I appreciate that it's not just constantly like, hey, watch her uncle beat her up. Like, that would be not great. 
<laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I wish there was a way to actually draw a black border around the text. I haven't figured out a way to do it, so my only options are it's basically impossible to read on this particular background. Or <laughs> it's a case of like, well, we're going to have this big, ugly blue square on the screen blocking part of this. Uh, the <laughs> Blocking part of it. Or arguably my, my least favorite idea is I would have to do something like this where I squish the screen. But I don't like to do that. <laughs> Mion took a long time to give her a reply. I got the feeling that Mion had been acting weird for a while now. She's like, but I, I, I was also going to kill someone tomorrow. Like I do every year. Like she was flustered by emotions or something. Yeah. Oh, she's just saying, no. <laughs> huh? Was that a sob? Mion! Are you crying? <laughs> she doesn't want to. Not she can't. Or she's not allowed to, but she doesn't want to. <laughs> oh. Never mind. What? Mion, what was she talking about? Uh... What? Uh oh. Are we getting creepy she on phone call again? <laughs> Some stories tend to show the abuse for shock factor rather than trying to tell a story that wants to garner empathy. Yeah, that's that's true. I had no idea what to say to that. Mion was clearly now talking to someone other than me. I didn't know who. All I could do was listened to her in a daze. Mio, come on, I just need to kill the guy. I mean, what? <laughs> oh, no, government could be listening. What? Oh my gosh, she is... she is... she's wasted out of her mind. <laughs> okay, she's just super drunk right now. When I said her name, whatever spell was on Mion was released. Oh, this is Shion. This is Shion. Yeah, that's true. That is definitely interesting. And yeah, I, I can kind of tell the developer had at least some experience with social work. Mainly because he kind of knows... He, he details a lot of the ins and outs of like, oh, this is exactly what would happen if like you make a call to CPS, or Japanese CPS. Which, like, I mean, I guess he could have presumably like looked that up, but like... For example, I don't know all the ins and outs of like, hey, what does happen if like you're in this tough social situation? I know you like you call this number, but like then what happens? Mion didn't answer. All I could hear were sobs coming through the receiver. I think there's a Shion, because it's not showing us her. She also Shion seems to have some kind of a history with Satoshi, so. Huh. <laughs> I had no idea how it happened, but I was pretty sure that last year, on this very day, Satoshi had called Mion and told her to bring Satogo to the festival. And when she asked why he needed her to do it, he replied the same way I just did. Well, both of those things were true. Uh-oh. 
たよ明日の夜だけ頼むってねケイちゃんの言い方があまりにもよく似てたんで<笑>ちょっと思い出して取り乱しちゃった I didn't expect this Sadashi had given her the exact same phone call one year ago today After that, Mion had said more. That I, that he, was lying. That he told her it would only be for the night of the festival. <laughs> Disappeared might have been a rather vague way to put it. Whether he ran away or not, Satoshi left, abandoning Satoko. We haven't seen one single sprite yet. And then, an idea far more indistinct than even fog crossed my mind. Satoshi made exactly the same phone call as me last year. Why would Satoshi make the exact same call? If, in the truest sense, he really made the exact same phone call as I am right now, then the incident where their aunt had been beaten to death, that's... could it... Satoshi... True, yeah, I'm seeing the parallels to chapter one here. And chapter two, because we had a creepy phone call here with Mion Shion as well. Last year. Satoko had been constantly abused by her uncle's wife, their aunt, too. Her aunt abused her the most, and on that night, in the same. Uh, of what? <clears throat> and on that night, in the name of Oyoshiro Sama's curse, she was taken from this world. If I thought about that, everything made perfect sense, didn't it? Kichi's <laughs> IQ is truly room temperature. That's, I, okay, you know, that, that means it's average. Look, we can't all have above average IQ. No, but that would mean... But then, Satoshi. He was a coward who abandoned Satoko and ran away, wasn't he? How could Satoshi... Resolve himself to kill a person to save Satoko. It was unthinkable. A few days later, he disappeared on Satoko's birthday. When I first heard it, I flew into a rage. What a cruel day to have run away on. But now that I thought about it like this, the story changed completely. Uh. I thought room temperature was the equivalent of average temperature and IQ average. I'm not saying 20 to 30 IQ is average. Actually, I don't know what equivalent to average IQ is. If you use Fahrenheit degrees, though, it would probably be closer. Satoshi had probably been even less calm than I was now. He was her big brother, related by blood, watching his little sister be abused day in and day out. Maybe that's why he couldn't keep calm. And that was why the corpse of their aunt beaten to death was so easily discovered. <laughs> well, he did the same thing, but I'll get away with it! Satoshi lost himself in his anger and hadn't hidden the corpse. He'd permitted a beginning to occur. If the police conducted a full-blown investigation, it was easy to imagine they wouldn't take along the pin down Satoshi as the culprit. Satoshi. He wished for a return to peaceful days of Satoko, and though he achieved it for a time, he had been steadily driven into a corner. And then, he wanted to at least hold out until Satoko's birthday, but finally, they nailed him. At the time, Satoshi had been carrying the savings he'd amassed to buy Satoko a giant stuffed animal for her birthday present. He would buy the stuffed animal as her gift, and then get caught. Or he could use the money and disappear. That was the choice he had been forced to make. And he... decided not to make Satoko the sister of a murderer. Hmm. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, except, um... Except Shion slash Mion in the second chapter, where they're just like, let's torture people for fun. <laughs> and also possibly... I'm still not too sure about exactly what happened in uh, chapter one. I know everyone kind of went crazy, so maybe it's just... Uh, I, don't, I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She owns a bit of a nutcase. It must have been an unspeakably bitter decision. All that money he'd saved wanting to see Satoko happy. 
He had to use it to make her sad. And he used his savings. And disappeared. To Tokyo, if the rumors were true. Uisi. Has he been slowly driven into a corner but had he been slowly driven into a corner by that repulsive man's pig headed pursuit? I mean you can't blame him for trying to find out the truth. It's true. There was a tr maybe he was just on drugs and he thought he committed murder. That was right. The deviant had confessed, and the incident was solved. <laughs> How would you want to bet? We are... We are taking forever to get to the festival. You couldn't just arbitrarily decide like that. You never know where or how humans are tied together. If that guy took the blame, then it was the perfect crime. Of course, if it really was a perfect crime, there would have been no reason for Satoshi to vanish. Unless that was an unrelated incident, too. <laughs> what were his savings? Ten dollars. Oh. Mmm. <laughs> Mion does work in a toy shop. We learned that in Chapter 2, so she would know. Did he buy it from her shop? Like, hey, Mion, one teddy bear, please. And she's like... What? How do you have that money? He's like, well, I have $10 in my bank account. I'm using it all. <laughs> oh, she didn't know about it. Mm. I didn't get it. After all that, I was understanding Satoshi less and less. The two of us fell silent. I couldn't remember how we even got to this topic. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Mio, uh, just pick her up. Okay, bye. <laughs> Questionable financial decisions. <laughs> I mean, look, if he only had $10 in his bank account, it's not really that irresponsible to spend it all on a teddy bear. I mean, it's not like, it's like you couldn't use that money. It's like, for what? Groceries cost way too much now. Oh, wait, but this was back in the 80s. $10 would have fetched you a lot more in the 80s. <laughs> Okay, Maybe it'll be like Crime and Punishment, where Keiichi just can't live with the guilt of doing it. I haven't even read Crime and Punishment, but I know the general gist of that story. Uh, maybe I should read it sometime. It was I was a little relieved. I hadn't needed to make the phone call. Satoko had already been invited to the festival. And not in a way that smelled of blood. A way to leave her uncle alone to create time for me to kill him. They purely wanted Satoko to enjoy herself, so they invited her. In the end, it was the same. But I was happy for that slight difference. Yeah, except now everyone's going to be like, Why is he not going to the festival? <gasps> Did you kill that guy? <laughs> yes, it.
We apologize to each other for a little bit. <laughs> As if interrupting our parting words, Mio st uh, struck straight where it hurt. Um, you know, um, I have to work. I deflected her, with a response that wasn't really an answer. Mion didn't hound me anymore after that. Maybe you should have planned an alibi for like, oh, I have to do this. I was gonna go to the bookstore. Look, I have a receipt. <laughs> Keiji's really banking on her just being too drunk to remember this in the morning. Click. Satoshi Hojo. Just who are you? I scorned you as a coward who ran away, abandoning his sister. I always thought you didn't have the right to call yourself her Nini. But now I didn't know what to think. Oyashiro Sama's curse on the fourth year, their aunt's death, and Satoshi's disappearance. And now, me trying to carry out Oyashiro Sama's curse on the fifth. Oddly enough, what I was going to do overlapped perfectly with Satoshi the day before the curse. No, that wasn't all. If we start back from Satoko being abused, then I'd been overlapping with Satoshi for days already. When I talked to Mion before, she asked me if I was Satoshi. If that was the first impression a third party like Mion got, then it was probably true. Then as Satoshi had accomplished, I would succeed in the murder. But that was the extent to which we overlapped. I was far calmer than Satoshi, and more calculating. How do you know that? You never knew the guy. I could actually grow calmer, and more enthusiast the more enthusiastic I became. That's why I wouldn't follow in Satoshi's footsteps. I would snip him cleanly out of the world, then get our peaceful life back. Do you, do you think that's gonna go? That that's how that's gonna go? Maybe Satoshi has been with me ever since I chose to use Satoshi's bat as my weapon. No. Maybe even longer than that. When I decided I'd be her Nini. Maybe Satoshi had been residing within me then, too. That's not how that works. Satoshi. Were you really a coward? Or are you a true Nini even now? The kind worthy of Satoko's love. Like, okay, I, I'm sure in Japanese that has more meaning, but, like, they couldn't find an English word translation for that. Because that... Anytime I read that, it just... It lessens the severity of the situation and just makes me, like, internally chuckle. It, it sounds ridiculous. I never met him, never spoken to him, even didn't know his face, but yet I felt so connected to him. I'd never felt that way before. Pff, yeah, he's very much talking. He's talking himself up to himself. I'll do it. I, I, oh, this guy sucked at killing this person, but I'll do well. Yeah. Funimation tried to translate Nini, and it was met with universal backlash. Really? I find that uh, hard to believe. Possessed. You made your choice without looking back. I don't like how the name of that. <laughs> you are possessed by the spirit of Satoshi. For the attention of those on the housewife slaughter incident case, that is a mouthful. July, redacted, 1982. They made it Big Brother or something. Okay, what? Why would you put the D's in there? Of course that's cringe. Maybe this is one of those things that just can't really translate well. It's probably that. Yeah, it's... it's mm -hmm. Let's just read. Okonomiya Police Station, 1st Investigative Division. Chief Takas Takasugi. Redacted Prefecture Police Headquarters for the Eradication of Drug-Related Crime. Ooh! Breaking Bad. Shishibone Branch Head Redacted. Regarding Incident Redacted, designated as Undercover Investigation, this message is to inform you that a section of the testimony records of an incident under the Police Headquarters jurisdiction has been found that is thought to be related to the Undercover Investigation of the incident in question. Okonomiya Police Station X, Hinamizawa Village Housewife Slaughter Incident. 
during an investigation of suspect redacted, who was arrested for possession of illegal drugs. There was testimony alluding to the crime in question, and it became clear that it was contained information that only the perpetrator could have known. Therefore, we are prepared to share this record of testimony with you, duplicate attached. If this testimony is to be believed, then there is an extremely high chance that suspect redacted was the perpetrator in the incident in question. In addition, on receiving this testimony, the head investigator on the case inquired as to the incident with the Okinomiya police station. But the responsible party at the Okinomiya police station misunderstood, and in compliance with the designation as an undercover investigation by executive order from Prefecture Police Headquarters on July 1st, 1982, General Admission B1-12, they did not explain the incident's existence to the head investigator as they should have. That is, the, like, the biggest run-on sentence I've ever read that took, like, it started here, and it didn't end till here. It took three whole text boxes to get for one sentence. Shorten it for crying out loud. <laughs> what could be an English word for Nini? It's a childish name for Nissan older brother, right? So how would it work the same way in English? Does it have to be a childish name? Couldn't it just be like my big brother? Maybe not. This, this is why I'm not a translator. Especially since I don't speak a lick of Japanese outside of the little I've picked up through playing these visual novels that still have the Japanese voice acting. Because of this, the head investigator did not realize the importance of the testimony as it related to the case in question. And, as a result, was negligent when combing the scene. We apologize for having effectively ignored it until now. In addition, there is a postscript stating that the suspect, Redacted, died while in confinement yesterday on this Redacted date. Well, that's a little, uh, ominous. Mm. Oh, it is meant to be childish? Lovely. 